when I said we were coming to a tavern because as you might have ascertained, City Tavern is closed. Um, it closed its doors for the final time, so far anyway, back on Halloween night of 2020, which sounds like a really spooky time for a tavern to close, especially one that opened in 1773. Um, but it was for mostly unspooky reasons. They simply went out of business that year. So the tavern has been open as recently as 2020 and first opened its doors in 1773. So if these walls could talk, which sometimes they can after a couple of drinks here, yeah. they would really have a lot of stories to tell you. Um, taverns and bars in Philadelphia and early Philadelphia were very important places where business and politics would continue to be practiced well into the night over a drink after the work day was over. Philadelphia Mercantile Exchange, the large brand building with columns that we passed that we'll pass again um, going the other way and get a good view of. It was right there starting in 1839 and um, the you know, drinks were still flowing over here at the tavern so people would pour over here after work. Um, but back in 1773 before the Revolutionary War it was often the site of um, heated discussions on, of a political nature. And sometimes when these topics are being discussed, tempers can flare. And that is what happened here one evening in 1781, when what can only be described as a barroom brawl breaks out here at the tavern. Pretty much everybody in the place is drawn into the melee. And by the time the fight is all over with, one person and one person only has been fatally wounded. And that is a young waiter who did not even help to start the fight, but was simply here trying to do his job. And in all the chaos, he has been stabbed and now lies bleeding on the floor. He would quickly succumb to his wounds that evening. Mm. Now, by the time the authorities arrive to investigate, his body has been taken away under cover of night. And all of a sudden, no one can remember any information to tell the police and it quickly becomes apparent that whoever dealt the fatal blow to this young waiter is someone who must be considered very important because it seems that everyone is willing to cover it up and in fact no one is ever brought to justice for this slaying. Now spirits don't like to have their murders go unsolved and it is soon after this incident that we begin to find the earliest reports of a visitor here at the tavern who we have heard people tell about um, as recently as 2020, just before the tavern shut down, and as early as the late 1700s, we find similar accounts from people's diaries and travel logs, um, traveling up and down the Delaware River, stopping in here for a drink, who all report the same figure, the same character that they encounter at the bar, a young man. Um, his clothing is more and more out of place as the years go by because it's never updated. He's always wearing what you would expect the young man to be wearing around here in the late 1700s. He catches the traveler's eye, looking at them with an urgent, pleading expression on his face as though he desperately needs to get their attention. And as unsettling as this is for, uh, for the, the guest from a total stranger, um, he looks at them this way for only a moment and then he does something even more upsetting and he suddenly slumps to the floor as though he has been stabbed. Now, being a compassionate person, the traveler will jump up and run around to check on the young man, only to find there is no one there on the floor, no one around the bar fitting the young man's description. So we at the ghost tour believe that the ghost of this young waiter has been hanging around on this site ever since that fateful evening in 1781, perhaps trying to get some attention on his murder and maybe have his killer finally brought to justice, never realizing that it is far too late uh, most likely to ever solve this particular cold case. Um, if he has been hanging around here ever since 1781, still trying to solve the murder, he is very determined because this is the other building I mentioned to you that has not always stood here. Um, since the time that it opened in 1773, it, it did close down for the most recent time in 2020. But there was over a century between those dates when the tavern was not here at all. It had closed to the public once before. Um, that happened in 1854, and it didn't simply go out of business that time. Something much more tragic had occurred here that night. There was to be a wedding held here that evening, but earlier in the day, the bride and her friends were all the way upstairs in City Tavern on the top floor, getting her ready for the event. And in all the excitement, no one notices at first when someone knocks over a lantern. Somewhat similar to mine, you notice there is a real flame in that lantern as there was of course in theirs and the curtains ignited and the fire spread very rapidly and by the time smoke fills the bar downstairs it is too late to rescue many of the people who were on the upper floors of City Tavern and the would-be bride is one of the folks who would perish that evening in the thick smoke. Now after that night, City Tavern lay in ruins, it was badly damaged and it was demolished 
after a time, but some of the original building materials were salvaged. And over 100 years later, in 1976, in celebration of the country's bicentennial birthday, Philadelphia is excited to announce the grand reopening of City Tavern here on the original footprint as the original and using some of the salvaged materials from the original. And we think maybe it was by using those materials that they inadvertently brought back the ghosts as well, because people began once again to report seeing the ghost of the young waiter who catches their eye and then slumps to the floor before vanishing. And once again, people start having events here in the second floor ballroom, including weddings. And since 1976, in the tavern's reopening, when weddings are held here, oftentimes the photographer will set up the camera and they'll look through the viewfinder and they will see the groom and they'll see the bride who they expected to see at this wedding. Then they will see something kind of unusual for a wedding, a second young lady wearing a wedding gown. Hers is of an old timey nature and she's coming down the central staircase that she never made it down that night. And she's looking around at the guests expectantly, but looking a little despondent as she realizes she doesn't recognize any of the guests because once again, this is not her wedding, but someone else's. She's come to be known as the ghost bride of City Tavern, a beloved guest at many folks' celebrations, um, but kind of a sad ending to her own personal story as with the waiter. But I like to think maybe the story doesn't have to have such a sad ending for our two stars, our two ghosts. Um, I'm thinking about how since the bride actually never made it to her own wedding ceremony and the groom survived the fire and moved on, she is technically still a single lady. And the waiter was quite young and probably had not married yet at the time of his unfortunate brutal slaying here in 1781. So maybe even though there are no alcoholic spirits mixing in the bar tonight, there could be some spirits mixing inside after all. We do hope that they have hit it off if they've met. Uh, in fact, it's a warm night like tonight. They might be sitting up there on the open air balcony listening to me gossip about them. Hopefully not offended by my tale. <laughs> um, although the, the flame in my candle probably makes the bride a little bit nervous. Who could blame her? So we'll move on. We're going to continue right around this cobblestone lane here.